Hello sports fans, it is Tuesday, March the 19th, the year 2013, and as usual, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Big day today, very excited about today, we're going to go through our NCAA tournament brackets, we're going to go game by game with you, round by round, pick the Sweet 16, pick the Final Four, pick the championship game, and pick the eventual national champion. I'll tell you, this year is wide open in college basketball. You have about eight teams at least that can win this thing. Probably about 16 that can get to the Final Four. It is wide, wide open this year. People's brackets are going to be blown up within the first couple hours of this tournament. All right, without further ado, let's start in the Midwest region. That's the region I think is the toughest. I think the Midwest is the toughest bracket. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pick the playing games for you. There's two playing games tonight, two tomorrow. I don't love the playing games, so I'm not going to pick uh, them. But let's, uh, let's pick the other games for you. Let's start with the 116 matchup. This is in Lexington, Kentucky. You have Louisville against the winner of NCA&T or Liberty. Obviously, we like Louisville there. You know, I've heard a bunch of people say because this game is being played in Lexington, which is the home court of Kentucky, all the Kentucky fans are going to be against Louisville. Yeah, there'll be some Kentucky fans against Louisville, but Louisville's going to buy most of the tickets. The Louisville fans are going to buy those tickets. It's going to be a sea of red in Lexington. Louisville's played regular season games at Lexington, and not against Kentucky either, against other teams, and it's been all Cardinal fans. I mean, I think that's a non-factor. I mean, people think it's going to be all blue Kentucky fans rooting against Louisville. That's not going to be the case. Louisville fans are going to buy the tickets. It's going to be all red. That's not going to be a factor. So I like Louisville over NCANT Liberty winner. Uh, also in Lexington, you have the 8-9 matchup. Colorado State against Missouri. Very interesting matchup. Missouri's been disappointing this year, and Colorado State's been surprising this year. I'm going to take Missouri just because I think they've had the better competition. I think they have the shorter travel here. Colorado State's coming across the country. Very, very tough game. I'm going to take Missouri. Okay, over to the San Jose uh, part of this bracket. We have the 5-12 matchup. Oklahoma State against Oregon. What a nice game. Oregon got a terrible seed. I mean, they should not be a 12 seed. They should be a higher seed than that. And when I mean higher, I mean they should have a lower number. They should not be a 12 seed at all. Oregon struggled without their point guard, Artis. They got him back. They won the Pac-12, and they did not get rewarded at all. And now they have to play a tough Oklahoma State team from the Big 12. This is a really nice game. I'm going to take Oklahoma State just because I like the Big 12 better than the Pac-12. Very nice game, though. Also in San Jose, you have the number four St. Louis team against number 13, New Mexico State. You know I love St. Louis. I've been talking about St. Louis all year. Before the season started, I said St. Louis was going to be one of my surprise teams. They've played so well, I don't know how surprising they are right now. I mean, they just won the Atlantic 10 uh, tournament. They won the regular season title. I mean, this is after Rick Majerus passed away as well. The coach filling in for him has done a tremendous job. He's up for coach of the year. I mean, along with Larry Nager from Miami, St. Louis very, very solid team. When they beat Butler the other day, the Butler coach, who knows something about going to the Final Four, said this team can get to the Final Four. That's how good they are. I like St. Louis there. So on the top half of the Midwest bracket, I like Louisville, Missouri, Oklahoma State, and St. Louis to advance. Bottom half of the Midwest bracket, let's start in Auburn Hills, Michigan. A 6-11 matchup. You have Memphis against the winner of Middle Tennessee State, St. Mary's. Obviously, I like Memphis here. Memphis runs through Conference USA every season. Is Memphis as good as they were, you know, in the John Calipari years? No, but they're good enough to win here. Very important game for Memphis, by the way. They've been bounced in the uh, tournament in the first round the last couple years. So you'd like to see Memphis win this game. I think they will. So Memphis advances here. You are 3-14 matchup in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Michigan State against Valparaiso. I love Tom Izzo in the tournament. Michigan State always makes a run. They're playing basically in that backyard here at Auburn Hills. It's going to be all Michigan State fans. I like Michigan State to win that game. Uh, over to the bottom half of that, you have the games in Philadelphia, the 7-10 matchups, Creighton and Cincinnati. Very interesting uh, game. Very contrasting styles here. Creighton uh, shoots the ball well. They like to get up and down the floor. Cincinnati is more of a grinded out team, has a tough time scoring. I don't like teams in the tournament that go long stretches without scoring. 
it just takes five minutes in these tournament games to get to lose it. I mean, you could have one five-minute bad spell, and you could be blown out by like 16 points in that time, and you could lose the game right there. That's why I like Creighton here. Cincinnati, too many lapses without uh, scoring a bucket. I like Creighton to beat Cincinnati. Uh, also in Philadelphia, you have Duke against Albany. I mean, I like Duke now that Kelly's back. Duke is a real threat to get some things done. So I like Duke there. So in the bottom half of the Midwest bracket, I like Memphis, Michigan State, Creighton, and Duke to advance. All right, let's go over to our, rest, uh, our West region. Let's start in Salt Lake City. The 116 matchup, Gonzaga against Southern. Gonzaga, who had just an amazing year, finished the season ranked number one, only lost two games. One was to Butler at the buzzer. This is Mark Few's best chance to get to a Final Four. I like Gonzaga here, obviously, to take care of Southern, so let's pencil in Gonzaga up there. Also in uh, Salt Lake City, the 8-9 matchup, Pitt against Wichita State. This is another tough game. Pitt's another one of these teams that goes long stretches without scoring. I do think Pitt is going to get through this game. I think they'll probably struggle. They will eke it out because of their defense. Jamie Dixon's a good coach. But Pitt, another team I don't like going too far because they go long stretches without scoring, just like Cincinnati. Okay, over to the games in Kansas City. We have the 5-12 matchup, Wisconsin and Mississippi. Mississippi off their big SEC uh, tournament run where they win the title, beat Florida. They were ecstatic. I think Mississippi is going to have a hangover for that. And the worst team they could have possibly drew is Wisconsin. Wisconsin plays a style that no one wants to deal with. They play an ugly style. It's different than everyone else's. Ole Miss is running into a buzzsaw here because Wisconsin's style is going to befuddle Ole Miss. I like Wisconsin to advance here. Also in Kansas City, Kansas State, the number four seed, against the number 13. Boise State or LaSalle winner. I like Kansas State here. Bruce Webb has done a tremendous job with this team. And remember, they're playing in Kansas City. They're going to have a lot of K-State fans there. Look for Kansas State to win. So on the top half of that West bracket, I like Gonzaga, Pitt, Wisconsin, and K-State to get it out of the first round. Bottom half of the West bracket, uh, let's go over to Salt Lake City. You have Arizona, who's the number six seed, against Belmont, who's the number 11. Belmont can really shoot the three. They can shoot the three. This is a dangerous, dangerous game for Arizona. I don't have the guts to pick Belmont. I'm going to pick Arizona, although I have not been impressed with Arizona that much this year, but I think they will have enough to beat Belmont here. Also in Salt Lake, you have the 3-14 matchup. New Mexico against Harvard. New Mexico had a tremendous season, won the Mountain West Conference Tournament. New Mexico is going to bring their fans over to Salt Lake City. Make no mistake about it. You're going to have a lot of Arizona fans there and a lot of New Mexico fans there. Those fan bases are rabid. I think New Mexico takes care of Harvard here. Uh, also in the bottom half of that bracket, these games are played at Dayton. Uh, number 7 Notre Dame is playing number 10 Iowa State. I'm not a big fan of this Notre Dame team. I don't think they're that good. I think Mark Bray does a tremendous job with his Notre Dame team because I don't think they're that good of a team, yet here they are in the NCAA tournament again. Here they are winning 25 games again. I don't think they're that great. Now, Iowa State is a flake. They're either very good or very bad. I'm going to say they got one good game in them here. I mean, they're playing in Dayton. I mean, this is a, the crowd should be split here. You get Iowa State fans, you'll get your Notre Dame fans. I think Iowa State gets the job done and beats Notre Dame here. Also in Dayton, you have number two, Ohio State, against number 15, Iona. Ohio State flying at the end of the year. Struggled in February, but then won at Indiana and just caught absolute fire. Run through the Big Ten tournament. Ohio State looking really good. And Iona, they ran through their tournament to make it as well. The game is in Dayton. That means all Ohio State fans, Ohio State will have enough to beat Iona. So on the bottom half of that draw, I like Arizona, New Mexico, Iowa State, and Ohio State to get through their first round games. Uh, let's go over to the South Bracket. Uh, let's go over to Kansas City. Number one, Kansas Jayhawks will be playing the number 16 Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Pencil in Kansas, no explanation needed. Uh, let's move on also to the games in Kansas City. 8-9 matchup, tremendous matchup. North Carolina and Roy Williams against Villanova and Jay Wright. Just a tasty, tasty first round game. I like what I've seen from North Carolina lately. Played much better at the end of the season. 
beginning of the season, they didn't even look like a tournament team. I was wondering if they were going to make the NIT. But Roy Williams is a nice coach, gotten a lot out of his team at the end of the year. I think North Carolina has enough to beat Jay Wright's Villanova team. Not a vintage Villanova team this year, so I like North Carolina here. Uh, bottom half there in Michigan, you will have uh, number five, Virginia Commonwealth, against number 12, Akron. You gotta love Virginia Commonwealth. I mean, they've had so many uh, long runs in the NCAA tournament in recent years. They should have another decent little run here. They're definitely gonna get through their first round game. I like Virginia Commonwealth to beat Akron. Also in Michigan, you have number four, Michigan, against number 13, South Dakota State. That's the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. I love that name. They've had a tremendous year. They have the longest home winning streak in the nation, South Dakota State. Problem is, they're not playing at South Dakota State. They're playing at Auburn Hills, Michigan. That's going to be all Wolverine fans. Michigan, too strong for South Dakota State. So on the top half of that bracket, I like Kansas, North Carolina, Virginia Commonwealth, and Michigan on the top half of your bracket. Bottom half of the South bracket, let's start in Austin. You have the 6-11 matchup, UCLA against Minnesota. Two very disappointing teams this year. I thought they would both be better. Now, UCLA, I was ready to pick UCLA in this game, but they had a big injury in the Pac-12 tournament, so they're going to lose one of their key players. For that reason, I'm going to take Minnesota. Plus, I like the Big Ten over the Pac-12. Pac-12, I'm not in love with this year. Big Ten was one of your better conferences, if not the best conference. I'm going to say Minnesota grinds out an ugly win. This should be like a 42-40 game somebody. I think Minnesota and Tubby Smith get the job done. Also in Austin, you have the 3-14 matchup, Florida against Northwestern State. I mean, I know Florida is uh, inconsistent. They could be choppy on the road. They're going to win this game. Pencil in Florida. Uh, also in Philadelphia, this is the very bottom of that bracket, you have number 7, San Diego State, against number 10, Oklahoma. This is a coin flip game. I mean, I'm going to take San Diego State just because I think they're the better defensive team. I don't love San Diego State coming across the country playing on the East Coast in Philadelphia. I never like when those West Coast teams play all the way out East. Oklahoma's played very shabbily, the, you know, the end of the season. They've kind of, you know, been stuck in mud. Two teams not peaking at the right time. I don't like either one of these teams. It's a coin flip game. I'll take San Diego State just because they're the better defensive team. Also in Philadelphia, you have the number two Georgetown Hoyas against Florida Gulf Coast, who is the number 15 seed. You got to take Georgetown. They were really hot at the end of the year. They did lose in the Big East tournament to Syracuse. I was a little surprised at that. that still, they have Otto Porter. To me, he was the player of the year. Georgetown, very, very solid. They'll get the job done. So in your South bracket, I mean, I like Kansas, North Carolina, Virginia Commonwealth, Michigan, Minnesota, Florida, San Diego State, and Georgetown to get out of your first round. Uh, let's go down to the East bracket. Let's start with the games in Dayton. Number 116 matchup, Indiana against the LIU Brooklyn James Madison winner. You have to love Indiana here. They're playing in Dayton. All the Indi Indiana fans will come over for that game. Indiana will get the job done here. Also in Dayton, 8-9 game, NC State against Temple. Very nice game. Now, NC State was my team last year that made a run. I picked NC State to make a nice run. They came through it for me. I want to pick them again this year. I don't think they're as good as last year, but I think they will get through this first game. It'll be a tough game. Temple always gives you a battle. I'll take NC State over Temple. Over to the games in the San Jose part of this top bracket. You have UNLV against Cal. This is a 5-12 matchup. Remember, these teams played already. This is a very interesting game because Cal is uh, 12, UNLV is 5, yet the game's in San Jose. That's Cal territory, so there should be all sorts of Cal fans there. I don't think Cal is that good. I'm going to take UNLV, even though I think it's going to be basically a Cal home game. UNLV beat them already once this year. I think they get them again. I think UNLV has enough to get through Cal. Also in San Jose, you have the number four, Syracuse Orange, against number 13, Montana Grizzlies. Syracuse started to show me something in the Big East tournament before Louisville got them in the second half. They seem to be coming out of their doldrums. I like their matchup zone in the tournament. Bayheim's a great tournament coach. I think Syracuse has enough to get through here. So the top part of this East bracket, Indiana, NC State, UNLV, and Syracuse to get through the first round. Bottom half of the East bracket, let's go to Lexington. You know, this, this part of the bracket, this bottom half of the East, is where I'm going to pick some real upsets here. You have your number six, Butler, against number 11, Bucknell. 
Now, Butler has been the darlings of the tournament for years. They've been your surprise team. Got to the national title game twice. I think the tables are going to be reversed here. I think Bucknell beats Butler in the first round here, knocks Butler right out. I don't think this is a vintage Butler team. I don't think they're that good. I've watched them a bunch of times this year. Yes, they've had some nice wins. I've also seen them, seen them lose a lot of games. I like Bucknell. They don't turn the ball over. I think they're a really good team. I think Bucknell gets Butler here in the, maybe the surprise of the first round. So I will take Bucknell to beat Butler. Also in Lexington, number three Marquette against number 14 Davidson. Davidson's another team that's gone on big runs in this tournament. I don't love Marquette, just like I don't like Cincinnati and Pitt. They go too long without scoring in this tournament. You cannot do that. You can't go five, six minutes without getting a bucket. You know, you just can't do it. When the scores are lower, that's when there's upsets. When the scores are high, you don't get so many upsets. The theory being is lower scores, less possessions, shorter game. Higher scores, more possessions, the better team's going to win. For this reason, I like Davidson here. I like Davidson to upset Marquette. You see, I'm picking some upsets down here on the east side. I'm picking Bucknell over Butler. I'm picking Davidson on Mar over Marquette. you got to pick some upsets. I'm picking them right here. Also on the uh, bottom half in Austin here, you have the 7-10 game, Illinois against Colorado. This is a very, very interesting game. I could go either way on this game. I wasn't impressed with Illinois this year. Colorado, they've had their moments. I mean, this is a coin flip type of game. I will go with Illinois just because I like the Big Ten over the Pac-12, but if Colorado won, it would not shock me an old coin flip type of game. And finally, on the bottom of the East Bracket in Austin, we have number two, Miami of Florida against Pacific. Miami of Florida with Larry Nega, who's up for Coach of the Year, has had an improbable season. They win the ACC regular season title. Then they come back and win the ACC uh, tournament. They could have been easily a number one seed. They get the two line here. Miami has a lot, you know, a lot to, to look forward to in this tournament. Miami is going to beat Pacific, make no mistake about it. So in your east bracket, top half, I like Indiana, NC State, UNLV, Syracuse, bottom half. A lot of upsets, Bucknell, Davidson, Illinois, and Miami. I got Bucknell and Davidson advancing through. Okay, that is your first round games. We went through all the first round games. Let's go to our second round games. Let's see who's going to get to the Sweet 16. Let's go back up to the Midwest bracket. Let's also start, you know, where we left off with Lexington. Louisville against uh, Missouri in the second round game. I mean, you have to like Louisville. Louisville should have enough to beat Missouri. I mean, like I said, the games in Lexington, it should be all Louisville fans there. Missouri's had a disappointing season. I think Missouri has enough to get through the first round. I don't think they get through the second round. I like Louisville over Missouri and Louisville to get to the Sweet 16. Okay, on, also on that top half of the Midwest bracket, Oklahoma State will be playing St. Louis. St. Louis, I've loved them all year. I can't get off of them now. They're playing really, want, uh, really well. They just won the A-10 tournament. I think St. Louis gets the job done here against Oklahoma State. So I like Louisville and St. Louis to get to the Sweet 16. Uh, over to the bottom half of the Midwest bracket, we have Memphis against Michigan State in Michigan. That is a very nice game. By the way, the Oklahoma State-St. Uh, Louis game will be in San Jose. Uh, Memphis-Michigan State on the bottom half of that bracket. I mean, that game will be played in Michigan. Michigan State is too strong for Memphis. Plus, they're playing close to home. It'll be all Michigan State fans. So I like Michigan State to beat Memphis and get to the Sweet 16. Bottom half of the Midwest bracket in Philadelphia. You have Creighton against Duke. Duke's too powerful for Creighton. I mean, Duke is way too powerful for, Grayton, uh, for Creighton. Duke will get the job done. So in the Midwest, I like Louisville, St. Louis, Michigan State, and Duke to get to your Sweet 16. I mean, there's some interesting matchups. Michigan State, Memphis, very interesting. Oklahoma State, St. Louis, very interesting. Very interesting matchups. Once again, Louisville, St. Louis, Michigan State, and Duke to get to your Sweet 16 out of the Midwest. All right, let's go to the West region. Uh, let's go to Salt Lake. Gonzaga at Pitt. I think Gonzaga has enough to get through Pittsburgh. I mean, I don't love Pittsburgh. They give you a good effort. I mean, Jamie Dixon's a good coach. They play good defense. They try hard. 
too many lapses in scoring. That's going to cost them here against Gonzaga. I like Gonzaga to beat uh, Pitt. Uh, over to Kansas City, you have a really nice game. Wisconsin against Kansas State. Wisconsin just befuddles you with their style. I like Kansas State. You know why? They're playing in Kansas City. It'll be all K-State fans there. I like Kansas State and Bruce Weber to get out of this. So I like Gonzaga and K-State on the top half of the West Bracket to get to the Sweet 16. Bottom half of the West Bracket in Salt Lake City. Arizona against New Mexico. I mean, they're going to be fighting for tickets over this game. The game is in Salt Lake City. New Mexico fans are rabid. Arizona fans are just as a hardcore. They are going to be battling for tickets. Should be a tremendous atmosphere. In years past, this would be Arizona's game. I don't think this is a vintage Arizona team. I think this is one of New Mexico's better teams. I think New Mexico beats Arizona here to get to the Sweet 16. On the bottom half of the West Bracket in Dayton, Iowa State against Ohio State. Iowa State is too up and down. Ohio State is really coming on. They're peaking at the right time. Ohio State gets the job done here with their defense. So there you go. In the West Bracket, I like Gonzaga, Kansas State, New Mexico, and Ohio State to get to your Sweet 16. Let's go over to the South. Uh, let's go over to Kansas City. Kansas against North Carolina in the second game. Roy Williams playing his old North Carolina team. I mean, this is a battle of the gargantuas. The game's in Kansas City, just like Kansas State. It's going to be all Kansas fans here. North Carolina is not great this year. Kansas, way too much for North Carolina. Kansas beats North Carolina and gets to the Sweet 16. Over to Michigan, you have Virginia Commonwealth against Michigan. Now, Virginia Commonwealth, a lot of people are picking them to, to upset Michigan. I don't think Virginia Commonwealth's as good as they've been in previous years. Plus, the game is in uh, Michigan. It's going to be all Michigan fans. It's going to be a Michigan house. Michigan and Beeline get through and beat Virginia Commonwealth. Over to the bottom half of the South Bracket in Austin, you have Minnesota against Florida. Florida should handle Minnesota. I mean, they should really, they have no business losing to Minnesota. Minnesota hasn't been great this year. I like Florida, even though they're in, inconsistent, to take care of Minnesota here. And also in Philadelphia on the bottom half of the South bracket, San Diego State against Georgetown. I like Georgetown here. I don't like San Diego State playing all the way over here in Philly. It's going to be all Georgetown fans. They're all going to come up to be in uh, Philadelphia for that game. San Diego State's going to have no home crowd at all. It's going to be all Georgetown. Georgetown takes care of business here, beats San Diego State, gets to the Sweet 16. So when you're south, I like Kansas, North Carolina, uh, I'm sorry, Kansas, Michigan, Florida, and Georgetown to get to your Sweet 16 out of the south. Over to your east bracket. Uh, let's go to the games in Dayton, Indiana against North Carolina State. As much as I am not sold on Indiana winning the title this year, as much as I loved North Carolina State last year, I can't pick NC State here. I just can't. They haven't shown me enough this year, so I'm going to take Indiana to win in Dayton over NC State and get to the Sweet 16. Over to San Jose, UNLV against Syracuse. I like Bayheim's matchup zone here. I mean, UNLV should have the crowd being it's in San Jose. Vegas fans should come over. Syracuse probably won't have a big gathering there. I think Syracuse defense too tough for UNLV. I think Syracuse gets the job done here. Uh, over to the bottom half of the East Bracket in Lexington. Bucknell against Davidson. I mean, this is going to be upset central here in this bracket. I'm picking Bucknell to beat Davidson. I like Bucknell's uh, team. I think Bucknell is getting to the Sweet 16. That is my upset pick to get to the Sweet 16. Also in Austin, on the bottom part of the East Bracket, you have Illinois against Miami. Miami's way too tough for Illinois. I mean, Miami is way better than Illinois. Illinois would be lucky to get out of their first round game. If they do, which I think they could, they're not beating Miami. So look for Miami to beat Illinois at Austin. So in the East, I like Indiana, Syracuse, Bucknell, and Miami to get out of your East bracket. So now, here's your Sweet 16. Midwest, Louisville against St. Louis, Michigan State against Duke. In your West, Gonzaga K-State. New Mexico, Ohio State, uh, over to your south, Kansas, Michigan, Florida, Georgetown, Indiana, Syracuse is in your east, and also in the east, Bucknell, Miami. So we have our Sweet 16 set. 
All right, let's now go from the Sweet 16 on. Let's go back up to the Midwest. Now remember, we're changing sites now. Midwest is going to be played in Indiana. We are now in Indiana. Louisville against St. Louis in the top half of that Midwest bracket. Very nice game. I mean, St. Louis, I'm sure, is going to make this a game. Louisville's too strong for St. Louis. Louisville is too strong. I mean, they are playing so well. If you watched any of Louisville against Syracuse in the second half, you would say this team is definitely one of the favorites to get to the Final Four. As much as I'd like to pick St. Louis here, I can't. I think Louisville gets the job done and gets to the Elite Eight. So Louisville beats St. Louis in the top half of the Midwest bracket. Bottom half of the Midwest bracket. A tremendous game in Indiana. Michigan State against Duke. Two colossals. Coach K against Tom Izzo. I saw so many people picking Michigan State in this game. I love Michigan State in the tournament. I think Duke's going to win. I think Duke is better than Michigan State this year. I think with Kelly coming back... I think Duke is better than Michigan State. Now, Duke has got to play a little better defense. You know Michigan State's going to play defense. Duke's got to pick it up on the defensive end. But I think Duke is going to have a little too much firepower for Michigan State. Michigan State has trouble scoring sometimes. And you know I don't like teams who can't score in the tournament. I think Duke gets the job done here. So Duke and Louisville come, uh, you know, get to the final eight in your Midwest bracket. Down to the west we go. These games are in Los Angeles. Top part of the West Bracket, Gonzaga against K-State. Really nice game. I think in Gonzaga playing uh, you know, in Los Angeles is going to be all Gonzaga fans. I think Gonzaga has enough to beat K-State. K-State can go through some spells without scoring too. I think Gonzaga gets the job done here and gets to the final eight. Over to the bottom half of the West Bracket in Los Angeles. New Mexico against Ohio State in a tasty game. What a nice game. Crowd should be all New Mexico against Ohio State, who is on a complete roll. I'm going to take Ohio State here because I like, you know, the Big Ten better than the Mountain West Conference. I think Ohio State is battle-tested. Night after night, they have to go up against, you know, Michigan State and, you know, Indiana and all those top teams in the Big Ten Mountain West Conference, which I think is underrated, still not as good as the Big Ten. Plus, Ohio State is so hot. The way they played in the Big Ten tournament, the way they played down the stretch, the way they committed to defense, I think this is going to be a knockout, drag them out game. I think it's going to be tight. I think the New Mexico fans are going to be there in Los Angeles. Do I think New Mexico has a shot? Yes. I'm going to say Ohio State with their defense ekes it out. Ohio State ekes it out over New Mexico. So in the West, you have Gonzaga and Ohio State getting to your Elite Eight. Over to the South we go, and uh, to the top part of the South bracket. Now remember, we're over in Dallas now for these games. Kansas against Michigan in a really nice game. Games in Dallas, that to me means all Kansas fans. The Kansas fans are going to travel over there. Going to be all Kansas fans. Kansas with their senior leadership beats the freshman, you know, of Michigan. I think Kansas has too much experience. Kansas beats Michigan, gets to your Elite Eight. Bottom part of the South bracket in Dallas, you have Florida against Georgetown. What a really nice game. I'm going to take Georgetown. I like Otto Porter. I think he's the best player in the country. Florida is very inconsistent. They play one game great, another game bad. They're up, they're down, they're all around. Florida is too inconsistent for me. I think Georgetown and Otto Porter beat Florida. So in the uh, in the South, I like uh, Kansas and Florida. To, uh, I'm sorry, Kansas and Georgetown to get to your Elite Eight. Let's go down to the East. Let's go down to D.C. These games will be played in Washington, D.C. Indiana against Syracuse in the top part of that bracket. What a tremendous game. Two historic programs. Now, everyone is picking Indiana to win the national title. I mean, I saw so many people pick Indiana to win the title. They've been picking Indiana since the preseason to win the title. I like Indiana. I think they're a good team. They're definitely a threat to get to the Final Four. Definitely can win it all. I've seen Indiana a lot this year, and I've seen them lose a lot. They've been ranked number one three times this year and lost all three times when they were ranked number one. Syracuse came out of their doldrums a little bit in the Big East tournament. Syracuse's matchup zone can be befuddling. I think Syracuse upsets Indiana here in Washington, D.C. I just have a feeling Syracuse's matchup zone, they always make a run in the tournament. Beheim's a good coach. 
Indiana has a lot of pressure on them to get to the Final Four. Syracuse, a lot of people have forgotten about them. I say Syracuse upsets Indiana and gets to the Final Eight. Bottom half of that East, uh, East bracket in D.C., you have Bucknell against Miami. Bucknell is on my surprise team this year. The surprise is over. Miami will beat Bucknell. Miami's too strong for Bucknell. Bucknell's run has to end. It ends here. So I like Miami to beat Bucknell. So Miami and Syracuse to come out of the D.C. East uh, uh, to get to the final eight. So right now we have our final eight. We have Louisville and Duke in the Midwest. In the West, Gonzaga and Ohio State. The South, Kansas and Georgetown. And in the East, Syracuse and Miami, that's your final eight. We're getting down there. Okay, let's see who's going to get to the final four. Let's go back up to the Midwest, back up to Indiana, where Louisville will be playing Duke in a just another gargantuan matchup. I mean, Mike Krzyzewski going up against Louisville and Rick Pitino. Does it get any better than that? I mean, it's a must-watch. I mean, you have to just watch this game. I don't care what you're doing that day. I don't care if you have a wedding. Find a place to watch this game. Louisville against Duke. I think Louisville is too strong defensively for Duke. Louisville's too balanced. I think Louisville will take care of Duke and get to the Final Four in Atlanta. Louisville beats Duke, comes out of the Midwest bracket. Down to the West we go in Los Angeles. Gonzaga against Ohio State. Gonzaga's best chance to get to the Final Four is this year. They've had nice runs before. They've gotten to the Final Eight just to come up short. They're going to come up short again, folks. Ohio State gets Gonzaga. Ohio State's playing too well right now, too strong. They're battle-tested being the Big Ten. Gonzaga, I love their team. I'll be rooting for them. I want them to get to the Final Four. Their conference is not that strong. They're not as battle-tested. Yes, they do play a good non-conference schedule. Their conference is not as strong as the Big Ten. I like Ohio State to beat Gonzaga and come out of the West. Okay, over to your south in uh, Dallas. We have Kansas going up against Georgetown in your Elite Eight. I like Kansas here. I like their you know, senior leadership. I do love Otto Porter on the other side for Georgetown. Georgetown will battle you. I didn't like what I saw from Georgetown when they lost to Syracuse in the Big East Tournament. I think Kansas, with their senior leadership, will be too much for Georgetown. I think Kansas takes care of business here. Plus, I think the crowd in Dallas is going to be all Kansas. I think that's going to be a major factor. Kansas beats Georgetown and gets back to the Final Four out of your South Bracket. Down to the East Bracket, we go to our Elite Eight in D.C. Syracuse against Miami. I mean, this is a really nice game. I don't think Syracuse can do it two games in a row. I don't think Syracuse can pull off a win against Indiana, which I'm picking them to do, and then come back and beat a really good Miami team. I think this bracket sets up well for Miami with the matchups. I think the bottom half of the bracket, they cruise through. I mean, I think they're going to not face Indiana. I think Indiana's going to lose before they have to face them. I think they can handle a team like Syracuse. Miami can shoot from the outside over that matchup zone. I like Miami to beat Syracuse and get to an improbable Final Four with Jim Laranega. Imagine if Jim Laranega takes Miami to the Final Four after he took George Mason to the Final Four. I mean, Laranega, just a tremendous coach. We always knew he was a great coach. I mean, I hope he gets his due now. He should be up for Coach of the Year without a doubt. So my Final Four, Louisville against Ohio State, Kansas against Miami in Atlanta. Okay, let's get to the Final Four. Louisville will be playing Ohio State in Atlanta. Very nice game. I think Louisville is too strong for Ohio State. I think Louisville will have their fan base down there in Atlanta. I mean, I think Louisville is going to dominate the fans down there in this game. I think Louisville will have a large contingent of fans. I think Louisville is too strong for Ohio State. I think they're just too deep for Ohio State. I think they're just too good for Ohio State. Louisville gets to your championship game beats Ohio State. On the other side of the bracket, Kansas against Miami. Just a very intriguing matchup. I keep going back to Kansas senior leadership. Remember, Kansas has all seniors. They were in the title game last year. These guys are all back. Very experienced team. Miami, never been in this spot before. That's going to be the difference. Kansas, with their experience, beats the inexperienced Miami. Miami's never seen this before in the Final Four. Kansas beats Miami. Kansas against Louisville in your national championship game 
in Atlanta. Who's your winner? The Louisville Cardinals. I think Louisville beats Kansas. I have been so impressed with Louisville this year. I was impressed with them last year when they almost beat Kentucky. Remember, Kentucky went on to win the national title last year. Louisville almost had them beat. It's the exact same group they had last year. They remember they fell short last year. They're going to come back and get the job done this year. They're deep. Their backcourt is amazing. They have a front court. I mean, we know Rick Pitino can coach. They're going to have a tremendous fan base down there in Atlanta. Louisville fans love to travel. I like the Louisville Cardinals and Rick Pitino to cut down the nets and beat the Kansas Jayhawks and win the national title. It should be a tremendous tournament. It all gets going tonight with the playing games. You have playing games tonight and tomorrow. It should be just a wacky tournament. I think eight teams at least can win this thing. Maybe 16 can get to the Final Four. I'm sure my bracket will be blown up within the first day. It's going to be very hard to get anything done with these brackets. But there you go. I gave it my best shot. I ran through all the games with you. Went through the Final you know, 16, 8, Final Four, Final Two, and then your national champion, the Louisville Cardinals. It is Rick Pitino's year this year. Okay, so there we are. Let me take a breath here. We ran through the NCAA tournament brackets. Louisville will be your winner. Uh, like I said, tonight the NCAA starts with your playing games. Two playing games tonight, two playing games tomorrow, and then it all gets going on Thursday. All right, let's go through some scores of note from last night, transitioning a little bit. I have to recap what went on last night. Uh, let's start in the NBA where the Knicks went into Utah and beat the Jazz. I mean, Utah. What a horrendous loss. No Carmelo Anthony, no uh, Stoudemire, Chandler's hurt, and yet the Knicks go in and beat Utah in Utah, and Utah's fighting for that last spot with the Lakers. I mean, is Utah just a gutless team? I mean, we know they can't win on the road. We know they're soft, they're, uh, and we know they have no backcourt. You thought they could beat the Knicks at, you know, at home without all these guys in the lineup for the Knicks. The Knicks have had a terrible road trip, can't beat anyone, have lost by double digits to everyone, you know, the Clippers, uh, Portland, Denver. And Utah lays an egg at home against the Knicks. I don't like anything I see from Utah. I think they're going to miss the playoffs. I think the Lakers, Houston, Golden State will make the playoffs. I think Utah's the team out. What a terrible loss to the Knicks last night. Uh, also last night, Phoenix at home did beat the Lakers. Remember, the Lakers are shorthanded. No Kobe, no Gasol. I still think the Lakers are going to make the playoffs because I think Utah is atrocious. So the Suns do beat the Lakers last night. Kobe's day-to-day. -day. Gasol should be back within a week. Also last night, uh, Miami goes into Boston and beats the Celtics. Miami is now up to 23 games in a row. They are now the second longest winning streak in NBA history. They passed the Rockets. They had tied the Rockets the other day at 22 in a row. That was second longest. Longest winning streak is the Lakers at 33. Now, I don't think my, uh, Miami's going to get up there, but what a tremendous winning streak. They were down big in this game. Remember, the Celtics didn't have Rondo last night or Garnett. Yet the Celtics played really inspired ball. They always play Miami well in Boston, especially in the regular season. LeBron James down the stretch is huge, and Miami pulls out the win. Those are streak goes on. Miami gets the job done there. Uh, Denver last night had a big win against the Bulls in Chicago. Noah looked like he tapped in uh, you know, a missed shot and put Chicago up by one with just a couple seconds to go. Referees called it off, said it was goaltending. I did think it was goaltending. The Chicago Bull announcer went crazy, but you know these home home guy announcers, you know they see things through rose-colored glasses. To me, it did look like goaltending. The Bull announcer went nuts, said it was a bad call. I thought it was a good call. So Denver escapes on the road. We know Denver is solid at home, but can they get some things done on the road? They do have a nice win against the Bulls. Bulls miss Derrick Rose in the worst way. He's got to get back. The Bulls have held down the fort well. Need Rose back in the worst way though. And Dallas last night blew out Atlanta in Atlanta. Dallas hanging on by a thread to make the playoffs, so they still are hanging around, still growing their beards till they get to 500. We'll see if that ever happens. Dallas beats Atlanta last night. Over to your NHL where the Rangers in the Garden had a big win against Carolina. Rangers needed the game in the worst way. Rangers still having trouble scoring. Defense is good. Effort is good. Goaltending is always good. Need to pick up their scoring. Do get a nice win against Carolina last night in the Garden. The Rangers desperately needed that. L.A. at home beat Phoenix. L.A. playing really well at home. Minnesota goes into Vancouver and beats Vancouver. Minnesota has now jumped them in the division. 
and uh, Chicago went into Colorado and beat the Avalanche. Remember, Chicago lost their uh, big winning streak to Colorado. They come back here and beat Colorado last night. Uh, not too much of a great night in the sports world last night. Kind of slow. Your World Baseball Classic last night, the Dominican Republic, no surprise. They beat the Netherlands. They win 4-1. to They were down 1-0. They score four runs in the fifth. Win 4-1. to Netherlands is out. Championship game tonight in San Francisco. Dominican Republic against Puerto Rico. You gotta like the Dominican Republic. They're undefeated. I think they get the job done here against Puerto Rico. I think the Dominican Republic has been the best team all the way. I think they win it tonight. Okay, so that's some of your scores from last night. As far as tonight, Tuesday, what to watch? Like I said before, you have your playing games for the NCAA tournament tonight. Two tonight, two tomorrow. Tonight you have NCANT against Liberty and St. Mary's against Middle Tennessee State. I don't get crazy about these games. I don't like these games. I could do without them. To me, the tournament starts on Thursday, but you do have that tonight. Also, you have your NIT going tonight, and the NIT is going to be covered by ESPN up and down. You turn on ESPN the next few days, you're going to have an NIT game on it. I mean, I think every ESPN channel has the NIT on it. You have some decent stuff going on in the NIT. Your four number one seeds in the NIT, Kentucky, Virginia, Alabama, and Southern Miss. So you have some decent teams. You want to watch some basketball, take a look at the NIT. As far as tonight in the NIT, some games to watch. Niagara against Maryland, St. John's against St. Joseph's, uh, Washington against BYU, and Kentucky against Robert Morris. That's an interesting game because Kentucky is a one seed, but because they're using their site for one of the NCAA tournament games, they have to travel to Robert Morris. So Robert Morris gets Kentucky at home. I mean, what a thrill for the Robert Morris uh, team and their athletic program. You're getting UK to come to your little gym there. It seats about 3,000 fans. I mean, that's a big thrill for Robert Morris. So that's uh, hopefully they can play a nice spirited game against Kentucky because that is a big thrill getting Kentucky to come to your campus. So you do have some NIT tonight. You also have some other tournaments. They have a bunch of tournaments now, just not the NIT. You have the CBI tournament and the College Insider tournament. Those are teams that didn't even make the NIT. The thing about the CBI and the uh, College Insider tournament, there's no TV. So you can follow it on the internet, but there's no TV for those games. But they are going on if you want to check that out. I did mention the World Baseball Classic final Puerto Rico against the Dominican Republic in San Francisco. I expect Dominican Republic to stay perfect and win this thing tonight. Uh, over to your NBA tonight. Really nice game. Denver at Oklahoma City. Now, Denver, this is a tough back-to-back. -back. They just had a hard-fought win against Chicago in Chicago last night. Now they come back and play at Oklahoma City. Look for Oklahoma City to dust Denver tonight. Over to your NHL tonight. You have the Rangers at the Devils. Tough back-to-back -back for the Rangers. They win last night against Carolina. They're in New Jersey tonight. We'll see about Brodeur. He's questionable. I mean, Brodeur's been out a bunch of games. May suit up tonight. Ottawa at the Islanders. Islanders sneaking up the standings. Uh, Washington at Pitt. Pitt's on fire. Washington's all but done. St. Louis at Vancouver. Very nice game. And uh, Phoenix at L.A. As I said, Phoenix and L.A. are playing. That's actually back-to-back -back games Phoenix and L.A. are playing in the same site. When have you ever seen that? Phoenix and L.A. played last night in L.A. And usually when you have a back-to-back, -back, you switch sites. You even sometimes have a day off. They're playing in Los Angeles again tonight. So Phoenix and L.A. played last night in L.A., and they come back tonight in L.A. It should be fisticuffs. Usually when teams you know, play each other twice in a row, there should be a lot of fighting in tonight's game, and L.A. playing really well at home. Phoenix starting to slide a little bit in the standings. So you do have some stuff tonight. You have your NCAA tournament playing games. You have your NIT. You have your World Baseball Classic championship game. You have some NHL. You have NBA Denver, Oklahoma City. You have some stuff. And as we get later into the week, it's going to be all NCAA tournament time, especially as we get to the weekend. All right, I got to catch my breath here. A lot to do there today. You guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging in there with me. You guys enjoy the games tonight. Stay safe. I will talk to you tomorrow when we recap everything that went on uh, tonight. Tomorrow we'll do our NHL State of the Union. Thursday we'll do our NBA State of the Union. Friday we'll recap everything. We'll also get into the NCAA tournament. We'll also do some movies on Friday. You guys stay safe. Enjoy the games tonight. I will talk to you tomorrow, Wednesday. Take care.